Lewis, Brandon, I am so thrilled uh, to chat with you. Thank you. The film is absolutely incredible. Um, I, I just the the first step is just such an incredible piece. Um, Brandon, Brandon, let's start with you. What what was it that made you passionate to tell this story? Yeah, you know, it was 2016 when we started the film. Donald Trump had just become president of the United States. The country was spiraling away from each other. I had a long relationship with Van Jones and saw Van was one of the few progressive leaders who was passionately trying to find some common ground across these divides. He sat down with me and my brother uh, right after Trump was elected and basically said, he's gonna spend the next four years trying to do everything he could to work across the aisle, to engage with Republicans in power, even Trump himself and this administration to get something accomplished on criminal justice reform and the addiction crisis. As a documentary filmmaker who cared deeply about the divisions in this country, I felt like following Van and his team, Lewis, Jessica, Topeka, all the other advocates on that journey would be critical. The first step back, the bill featured in the film that they fought for didn't even exist. Van didn't know Jared Kushner. It was just at that time a theory of change that bridge building could lead to progress that could impact people's lives. And I knew that that was going to be a perilous and a really conflict ridden fight as well. And I wanted to create a documentary that could inform the public on what bridge building looks like in this day and age. You know, on paper, it doesn't feel like this should be a hard thing, but I, I understand that things are so polarized, but this idea of working together at that high level, it, it, it doesn't sound like it should be that difficult. Um, you know, Lewis, just from your experiences, can you talk about the important, the importance of understanding and reaching across that that aisle that that feels like such an incredible gap. Look, I can tell you that people who are in a prison house don't care who's in the White House so long as they can get back to their mama's house. That's it. Yeah. Um, and when you humanize the experiences of people who have been impacted by an issue, um, you'll be surprised about how you can close that gap. Um, with people who are in positions of power. Let me give you an example. I remember one time we went into this unnamed, uh, very well-known and powerful senator's office. And we were talking about the bill and we were you know, going over the text and I had shared my uh, experience. And then on the way out, he said, hey, Lewis, can you hang back for a second? And um, I, I hung back and he said, look, I'm gonna share something with you that I believe that you'll keep in confidence. He said, my wife and I, we have a nephew who is like a surrogate son to us, who is currently incarcerated. And we send him um, packages um, every month and we send him money, but we always do it anonymously um, because of the stigma around having someone who's incarcerated. He said, but after today, um, you are going, you have provoked me to re have a conversation with my wife about coming out of the shadows. Uh, and so you'll be surprised about how this issue of mass incarceration specifically, how it impacts people who are in positions of power. Um, and what we try to do again was just humanize those experiences, Steve. We tried to bring the stories of the Lewis L. Reeds, the Davis Safavians, the Topeka K. Sams, um, um, the Amy Povas, and all of the other advocates that were alongside uh, us in this fight. We tried to bring them into those rooms and we tried to really speak from uh, an, an empathic uh, perspective. Wow. Uh, yeah, it, it it is incredible to watch this sort of this battle taking place. And, you know, it, it just in reading the press notes, I, I'm wondering how you both feel about this. Van Jones makes a comment. Uh, he, he says that antagon, the antagonist of the film is the status quo. I, I was wondering how that resonates with you. And, and is that something you agree with? Look, wholeheart, wholeheartedly. Um, I think that 
Van was being palatable uh, in, 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 in expressing uh, his thoughts. I would have probably said things a, a little bit more uh, colorful <laughs> than that, but uh, we have to challenge the status quo. We 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 have to. I you know we we were just asked not too long ago um, how we felt about the current administration, and we do think that the I personally believe that the current administration has taken some nominal steps um, in and around criminal justice reform, but I think that there are leaps and bounds that they could act out on courage and faith in order to be able to, uh, you know, in order to be able to alleviate a lot of the injustices that has, you know, been um, levied against black, brown, and poor white people in this country. I mean, you think about this, right? The status quo since the 1994 crime bill, and even before then, when we had the Willie Horton scare, <clears throat> excuse me, was that you had to lock people up and throw the key as far in the other direction as possible and forget about these individuals. Um, and, you know, we just slowly but surely was able to chip away at that narrative and have people in, po in positions of power understand that the old way of how we did things, maintaining the status quo, was not going to get us anywhere. Look, my grandmom used to tell me this, we don't accept C's in this house. Right, C's, C's are, are the are the grading equivalent of the status quo. You're not flunking out, <laughs> but you're not on the honor roll as well, <laughs> right? And so my grandmama used to challenge us to always be on the honor roll, always be going above and beyond what you can do in order to do something. And so I think that the status quo needs to be challenged and people in positions of power need to be graded in A, especially on the issue of criminal justice reform. And what that A should look like is not locking people up and forgetting about them. It should be providing rehabilitative services. It should be providing uh, um, uh, springboards to successes rather than perpetuating the trapdoors to failure that we have historically gotten. Yeah, and I'll just add, you know, the, the bar that Lewis and Van and Jessica and all the other advocates that worked on this legislation set in their advocacy, what was happening in front of the camera, they rose the bar on us as storytellers and filmmakers to also go against the status quo. There were a lot of people that were telling us, you know, how can you include a Jared Kushner in your film? How can you include a Kellyanne Conway? How can you include Donald Trump in your film when they are causing this much harm to communities? How, how did Lewis and Jessica and Van step in? They were stepping into these really uncomfortable, difficult situations. You know, Lewis mentioned an example of a conversation with the Senator that was open and amenable to his advocacy and that created a breakthrough. For every person like that, Lewis, there was also conversations where I saw in front of my eyes, you know, him being dehum uh, dehumanized, you know, and, and relegated to, you know, your, uh, you know, a number. And so they and were- you'll see, you'll see a reflection of that in the film that that's actually captured. Yeah, it's a brilliant, amazing scene in the film. And so for us in making the film, we sought to not ignore, you know, all the terrible things that uh, you know, were some of the leaders on the right were doing in the public in, in, in their in their leadership positions, but also to have them included in the film and to have their work on the bill also represented. And what that creates as an experience, you know, you might watch the movie and kind of walk out and not notice, but you're watching a very unique representation of multiple political persuasions being represented fairly in my eyes, or at least as fairly as we were able to muster. So people who are, uh, you know, against what Van and Lewis were doing and, you know, did, did oppose the First Step Act and believe in only comprehensive reform. Patrice Cullors, who opposed the bill, she's represented in the film and her ideas are, she's not an antagonist. She's you know, we really wanted to understand why she opposed the bill so that people that, you know, agreed with her could sit in the audience, feel respected and engage in a conversation. Similarly, we've screened the film in a lot of red states and conservatives that, um, you know, don't like Van Jones, don't like Cory Booker, don't like Kamala Harris. They're there and they watch and they see senators, they see representatives that represent their view on the screen in a fair way, not as villains, and then they're brought to the table. And the result is that you can have one movie that engages a very diverse audience base. And hopefully that can 
break down some of the barriers, some of the distrust, and increase some of the understanding across these pervasive divisions. And, and Van never wavers in his political affiliation. Uh, there, there's a great, I think he's sitting with Jared uh, Kushner at one point, and he says, you know, I appreciate all that you've done and all the hard work you've done, and I'm going to work really hard to make sure you get a new job in 2020 or something to that effect. Like, he, he's not, it's not like he's saying, oh, you know, I, the Republicans aren't so bad, but he's, he's, he's meeting them halfway with this idea, with this belief that something can be done if they work together. And I, I, it, it's astounding. Um, and uh, which amaze, which I'd like to talk about Van here because Van in this film, I love that you talk about being fair because there are so many people in this film, not, I'm talking about the political process, but are being, it feels like they're being unfair to Van, you know, like uh, we're, we're disposing of people, of, of him, so or are disposing of him on social, you know, he, he's, uh, what does he call Twitter? I think he calls it hater at one point and just ignore it because it's hater. Um, and at one point he says, everyone has the right to feel appreciated. I gave that up to get a victory. And, and I was wondering, do, do you think we seem to, to only be able to give one or the other and, and why, especially in an issue that's this complex? Well, obviously you watched the film, film so we appreciate it. <laughs> that was, that it's great. Was, it's a brilliant I, film. I have I have a lot of vanisms as well, but that actually uh, that was overlooked. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I catalog that. But look, um, I think that when you have the lived experience like how I have, 14 years in federal prison, uh, two parents who were federally incarcerated when I was five years old, um, you come from a community who has either had more people incarcerated and or shot and killed then they have graduated high school, let alone going into college. You have a tendency to feel marginalized. You have a tendency to feel overlooked and undervalued. Um, and you have to give up certain things in order to be able to survive, um, in order to be able to make it until the next day. And I think that the spirit of what Van was, was, was mentioning in that quote um, is something that is far too familiar with who our constituents were. Our constituents didn't live on Twitter, <laughs> right? Like the people by whom we were fighting for, they didn't have access to social media. Those folks wanted to be home. They didn't care about who was in the White House so long as they can get out of the prison house to get back home to their own house. That was it. And so you have to give up popularity sometimes. You have to give up the notion of being liked in order to be able to win. And sometimes I think that is a classic example of what you will see unfold in this fi film. Winning doesn't feel good. <laughs> you know, I, I think that we have this, we have this fairy tale notion of like, oh, the moment that you win, um, there's going to be rainbows and unicorns like that just sprinkle out of the sky. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. You know, I'm still trying to, I, we, we, I, as an advocate in this, you know, social and criminal justice reform space, I'm still trying to explain to people, they look beyond the 75,000 people who have been released from federal prison. They look beyond the, you know, more than 2 million years of human freedom restored back into our communities. They look beyond the fact that people like Lonnie and Lyle Jones, you know, who were first time drug offenders and were sentenced to life sentences in federal prison who served 20 years and were released as a result of this bill. They look beyond that and they say, why did you work with the Trump administration? How, how, how could you, Lewis, of all people? How could you? This, this guy has vilified black, brown, and poor white people. He's been just terrible on all of these issues. How could you? And my response to them is that, how could I not? How could I not? And so I, I think that, you know, the notion of what, what Van talks about um, in, in that quote that you mentioned is, is something um, that, that we really, really, really embody. And, and the people who were released under under this bill actually embodies as well. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add to what Lewis is saying in that, you know, as a filmmaker, we had to really think through how to end the story, you know? Um, 
there is a version of this film that we could have edited that resulted in the bill passing, people come home from prison, and you know, this many people got released and credits roll. That's not how this film ends. I'm giving th things away, which I don't know, maybe you shouldn't in an interview, but the bill passes, people come home from prison, but there's a lot of people in the progressive movement and otherwise that were really upset with the way, you know, Van and team went about passing the bill. Uh, you know, the final shot of Van is it's, it's just him. Um, you know, and it, it's not to say that there aren't, there was a, you know, there was a massive coalition that worked on this bill, but there was some thinking that maybe once the bill passed, everyone would come around and sort of like, you know, just say, hurrah, we got this done. Congratulations. We stand behind you. That didn't happen. The bill passed and a lot of those fractures, a lot of those tensions still exist. And you see that at the end of the film. And as a filmmaker, it was really important to us to communicate that. And, you know, to say there was like a lot of people who were involved, not a lot of people, there were some people who were involved in this telling of the story who wanted a more tied up in a bow ending. And we consciously did not do that. We show the impact, we show where people have come home, but we also show uh, some of the tough consequences of this fight because bridge building is not easy. And I, my attempt in telling this story is not to present it. I don't wanna present it in a false light as just being a easy hero's journey. It's a tough journey that, um, that creates a lot of impact, but also has consequences. I love the personally, I love the way that you edit that fa that finale because um, I like I like what Lewis says, winning doesn't always feel good. And and this is this is not a hooray. I mean, it is there's a hooray moment. And also, an oh, 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 no, there's aftershocks. And and to chronicle that the way that you did, I think is a much more authentic picture of of the difficulties and the the trauma that is embedded so deeply underneath these conversations. Yeah, and the uh, beauty is the, the beauty of film is like you show people that like if I didn't show that, then how would the film serve a purpose? The whole idea is that those tensions still exist, so that when you're in a theater, you watch that, then the lights come up, you turn to the person next to you. And like, I want the audience and the public and people who watch the film to like wrestle with that. And like, there's still work to be done. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you. Oh, sorry, what? I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought I, did I, I thought I cut you off. No, we're good. Was there a lag? <laughs> you said there's still work to be done and I'm like, oh, it's so good. Um, um, Brandon, it I, honestly, I, I mean this truly, the film is incredible. Um, I appreciate so deeply the conversations that that you and Lewis and Van uh, are having. Thank you so much for your time, for your candor. Uh, please thank Lewis as well. I know he had to step out a couple minutes early. Um, but please uh, thank you so much for, or please let him know that. Thank you so much for your time and I truly wish you the both the best and for the film. Yeah, Steve, thank you. Thank you for your interest and, in, you know, having such a thoughtful conversation. It me means a lot that you watch the film and uh, engage with it in such a th thoughtful way. So thanks for taking the time as well. Thank you. That, that means a lot. Thank you.